Right, welcome to this army overview and tactica video for the Eldar. Uh, my favourite race in the game and this force is the most tried and tested and has been the most successful. Uh, I think so far won every game. Uh, it's a force that have taken time to put together. Units that have, I've pretty much tried most of the Eldar units. Um, but this combination that we've got here seems to work very well in games. Only recently been uh, refined to the force that you're going to see here. Um, changes have been made pretty much in every game but now I've got a force that I'm very happy with. Each unit has a role to play and uh, you'll see that we can look at each unit here and then we're going to uh, have a look at the whole army, look, look at the army philosophy, the, the battle plan and the way it's going to be used in games. So we're going to run through the codex, uh, we're going to run through the units that we have here and get a whole overview of this Eldar force. It's 1850 points uh, is the size of the force that we have here. So inspiration for colour schemes, uh, I wanted a, an off-world kind of colour, ali an alien planet kind of, uh, and sort of an eerie colour as well, and uh, the turquoise colour, I'll show you one of the roof lords here. That turquoise colour's worked very well, uh, white as a colour and black complement it and then this I didn't want a standard sort of gold colour, I didn't want a standard silver, I wanted a kind of a ghostly kind of colour. And it's that bronze kind of effect um, with the metallic that's uh, been an added complement to that colour scheme. Very happy with how it's come out. I've applied that to all the standard units and then for like the aspect warriors I've kept those as they are in the codex. So like all the colour schemes for the elder. Very colourful force, great variety to it. So it's an enjoyable army to collect. Um, and it is also an army that is very, or can be, very high powered and high performing. Uh, one of the most successful races around at the moment in Warhammer 40,000. And has been uh, over the years I think as well. So, inspiration for the colour scheme is from the Ibrasil colours um, in the book. Uh, see if I can find it here. They give you a number of painting options. Uh, yeah, it's just here. So it's this turquoise and white colour I like. Didn't like the colour of the guns, I changed that to black and then introduced um, that bronze colouring into it as well. And that's worked out very effective. Very happy with how that's turned out. Started collecting Eldar a few, uh, about four years ago, built up the collection there. Then the new codex has come out um, and then have since added some of the new units um, and kept a lot of the old and just adjusted them um, just to fit in with this force. A lot of favourite units that I have in the Eldar army, ones that I definitely wanted to include. And that's how I'd say go about collecting Eldar if you're interested. Um, just start with a handful of units that you absolutely definitely want in the force. You, For example, Striking Scorpion is my favourite unit in the game. Um, just love the sculpting of them, the colour scheme, so they were compulsory choice for me. So I got Striking Scorpions, painted them up, um, and they are a must in this force and then there's other units I really liked, I added them and then around those units I tried to build up uh, an army that would complement and enhance those units and an army that would perform well. If you like this turquoise colour scheme um, and the way that's come out then check out the Eldar painting tutorial on my channel. The full painting tutorial show you exactly how to paint this colour scheme with all the special effects from start to finish. I actually paint one of the new um, Wraith Guard figures um, but that same technique can be applied to all of the Eldar units and vehicles and flyers as well. So you, you get the codex, uh, you read through it, choose units that you like, don't rush out and buy a whole load of stuff, uh, but just take your time, gradually collecting one unit at a time, constructing it, painting it, finishing it, and then moving on to the next one. You'll enjoy yourself if you do it. Take more time, but you'll enjoy yourself and gradually build up small games. You can do allied games now in 40k, so you can join in with a friend, 500 points, whatever. Uh, and then just build it up from there and you'll enjoy it as you build a small force, you use it in games, it's finished you can stand back and admire what you've done and then you gradually build up your force because this force I don't do in a couple of months, this is um, like a year, perhaps a bit more uh, amount of work so over time you gradually build it up to what it is here uh, but not all world are the same, you've got to build a force that reflects your style of play and has the units that you really like um, and then as I work on the force I just put lists together, um, all different ones, and then I uh, do the list, and then 
have like a template of how it will look in the games as well. So sort of draw out uh, how the force will look like a footprint and see if it actually looks like a good force. And then once you've made up your mind, you start getting your units and painting them up. So we'll just go through lovely codex here. The production quality of these is absolutely superb. Very, very nice work that Games Workshop have done. We'll just go to the back here with the points costs for units. So I used to have Prince Yurio, he's not quite as good anymore, he's not in the force. Um, and the others here are all right. I didn't take any uh, in this particular force. I have experimented with them. Um, and you notice in this force no psychers at all, which is kind of an exception. Uh, most Eldar armies have psychers and they use them to enhance the abilities of other units. I haven't gone for that, I've just gone for uh, combat power only. I've taken the points I would have spent on a psyker and I've included one of the other units that I wanted. So um, People use psychers and they use them very well. There's no psychic stuff in this force whatsoever, uh, which is uh, rare for an Eldar force. So, Army Commander, we'll start with him. Uh, strengths and weaknesses for the Eldar. Strengths, speed, very, very fast force um, for the Eldar. Uh, good firepower, good in combat. Um, so those are the strengths um, for the Eldar. Weaknesses, lack of uh, toughness. You can, a lot of Eldar armies can be very weak. You've got toughness free. Um, that it does have an impact in games. So what I've done in this force is tried to minimize that weakness. Um, not much toughness free. Uh, units in this Eldar force. So I've tried to um, offset that with higher toughness units so that element of toughness is in the game. Armor saves generally, the, the main armor save that I have is uh, 3 plus. In fact uh, that is the armor save of this force. Just looking at all the units here they're all 3 up saves. So it's good armor I have here for the uh, this Eldar army. Um, and that helps compensate for that lack of toughness as well. So I wanted a, I want some units in the game that can take on anything. Um, and for the HQ, I wanted something that was tough and that would survive. So going for the advertise, 195 points. Um, people say, well, he's slow. He wanders around. He doesn't do anything. He is designed uh, to uh, defensively, and that's for holding my objective uh, or a number of objectives. Uh, with him around, um, then the opponent has a problem. If he's trying to get to one of your objectives um, and the avatar is nearby, then vehicles, heavy infantry, uh, are going to be in trouble with him nearby. So, I've given him uh, just no upgrades. He's 195 points as he is. Uh, weapon skill 10, ballistic skill 10, strength and toughness 6, 5 wounds now, used to be 4 wounds, initiative 10, 5 attacks. Leadership 10, he's fearless anyway, free up to save. Um, and then he's got the demon um, invun save as well. He's got fleet, uh, he's got the molten body, so it's impervious to flames and multi melters and so on. Um, so, superb unit, um, monstrous creature as well. So, tough, tough opponent. He's done well in combats against all different. If you check out the battle reports, you'll see him taking on anyone. So, very good. Key point for him though is this 12 inch influence he has of Fearless. Um, so I can sit there on an objective and any troops that I have nearby, uh, they all get that Fearless as well, which is very, very handy in games. So he's a tough unit, a uh, unit that I can just throw into pretty much anything, um, so he forms an important function in the game. Just one HQ for this army. Um, so we're going to troops now. Now in this force, I have a strong philosophy that the troops should be uh, a minimal point spend. I uh, don't want to spend too much points on troops. I wanted to plough all of that into elites and heavy support. And it's those elites and heavy support that go out and then they take on the opponent, they do all the damage, they absorb the hits and then the troops swoop in and take the objectives. I used to take Dire Avengers, small squad in a wave serpent. But that was a lot of points, you got a you know, 120 point wave serpent. And then your Dire Avenger unit on top of that, you know, 150 points a time. And then someone on YouTube uh, in a comment said, well, why don't you take jet bikes? So uh, I took that advice, took the jet bikes, um, 
and it's worked out really well. So again, keeping the points cost right down, uh, 50 on points gets you free jet bikes. So I had modelled these to carry the Shrook and Cannons. Um, one in three is allowed to take a Shrook and Cannon, but that's not going to count in the game here. Just a minimum point spent, so just three jet bikes, that's one unit, and then a second unit of three jet bikes. And that's my troop slot filled up. Uh, is it vulnerable? Well, it's not too bad. If I keep them in reserve, always keep them in reserve. Um, so they're not coming on uh, until turn two onwards. So they're kept out of trouble. And then uh, I hide them or uh, boost, turbo boost them into a quiet area of the battlefield. Um, so all the fighting's going in one corner. These will just zoom on and tuck away in another and keep moving them around, keep giving them their uh, cover save and uh, generally that works fine. That ability for them to move so fast, because Eldar jet bikes can f fly from one end of the table to the other, uh, you can swoop in on objectives um, towards the end of the game. Keep them out of the trouble, hide them somewhere else, and then zoom in when you need to. So great flexibility of these. Pretty tough as well. Toughness four, three plus save. Um, and then with the speed they go out, you get the cover save as well. So they've been effective, they work very well. And they're just designed to stay out of trouble and then snatch objectives. Um, towards the end of the game and that combination uh, has worked well uh, in the games and if you see the battle reports you'll see that tactic being used and how effective it can be. So that's it for troops only 102 points for those two, that's the lowest troop spend of any of the armies that I have and it frees up those points that I can now plough into the main fighting force for this army. So we're going to elites here and El Eldar army I think should be a uh, include a lot of elite choices there's so much to choose from and some great great units so my favorite unit striking scorpions and uh, it's carried over from fifth edition used them there used them in sixth edition and then they are a must in this uh, edition as well so I took a full I take a full unit of ten to grant that combat power. Free up save for these guys, they've got stealth, they've got infiltrate, um, some great carrying uh, good grenades as well, plasma grenades. So they're 17 points each, so a unit of 10 is 170 points. And then the little upgrades that make them excellent. Take the Exarch, 10 points. And then the Scorpion score it's 30 points, but that hasn't the cost of that hasn't put me off because it's a unique uh, power fist in the fact that it strikes at normal initiative and counts as a, a weapon as well so you're giving the guy an extra attack um, he's got the claw and the chain sword uh, so it's two attacks basic three for that one for charging um, and then striking at normal initiative at strength six uh, AP2 excellent weapon so that is in there and if you add all of that up then that comes to 210 points now Philosophy for these, I've, I've tried infiltrating them before you get close to the enemy but the opponent knows where they are and then they get bombarded by stuff. Their numbers get whittled down and then uh, they don't do as well. So I then started putting them in a wave serpent, the wave serpent fly up the table. Uh, but again, that was a better option. But the thing I found was the disadvantage of the transport is that they get out and then they have to sit there for a turn. So, there's not much you can do about that but then I've found that with these, these are infiltrators if you put them in a transport I put them in a wave serpent if you do that then the transport vehicle uh, can infiltrate with them so the wave serpent can flank, that means it can turn up on the side and the way the wave serpents are now with the strength of firepower that they have um, if you turn up on the flank then uh, there's a good chance that wave serpent can take on a vehicle, side armour even rear armour if the opponent's far forwards enough um, and you can destroy it with that transport vehicle and provide some covering fire whilst your elites disembark and then prepare to move out and assault on the following turns. It's a combination that has worked extremely well. Your opponent doesn't know where, the, where you're going to turn up. Uh, you've got that speed element. This can turn up on a flank and zoom across through into the opponent's side um, and then lay down some brilliant firepower as well. So this combination, uh, the scorpions inside the wave serpent, um, I found 
has been a very effective one indeed. Even just the Scorpion's Grant and the ability for this to turn up on a flank uh, is a great enhancement. So the Scorpions are in uh, and then they go inside the Wave Serpent. Might as well discuss Wave Serpents now. Uh, the best transport I think in 40k at the moment. I know there's some other good ones out there. Uh, but front armour and side armour of 12 is uh, excellent for a transport vehicle. Um, it can carry 12 models. It's got this serpent shield, which is uh, ridiculous. On a 2 plus, you're going to convert a penetrator hit into a glancing hit. So that's going to save this vehicle uh, from getting blown away as it moves on in the first turn. Also, you can take that serpent shield and instead deactivate it and then fire the weapon. So you can deactivate it at 60 inches range, which is superb. It's strength 7. And then it's an assault, D6 plus 1 shot. So you're going to get between 2 and 7 shots. It causes pinning and it ignores cover. So, incredible uh, weapon. Strength 7. So if you're firing Imperial Guard heavy weapons bases and they're behind an Aegis defense line, you're going to nullify the cover and Strength 7 is instant death. So, uh, brilliant weapon. Strength 7 against side armor, rear armor. Uh, you've got a good chance of that going through. And the number of shots is excellent. So, excellent weapon. Uh, great option there. And then just for this particular transport, um, I haven't modelled it yet. I need to, um, on top there, I need to get the um, scatter laser. But I pay the f uh, five points for replacing the twin link shrewd cannons with twin link scatter lasers. Um, just that extra shot at strength six. And then also, if you fire that first, it makes everything else twin linked. So uh, that serpent, serpent shield, when it deactivates, when it activates, and fires, uh, will if you get a hit with the, with the scatter laser, it will make the serpent shield twin linked as well. So brilliant upgrade to have. Uh, ballistic skill four now on these transports to make them even better. And then I do pay the extra ten points just to get the shrewd can underneath as well. So some more shots. That's so that when you come on, you can really hose down uh, a vehicle, and most of the time, if the armor is low enough. Um, you'll be able to take it out. So that ability to turn, come up, uh, turn up on the flank, blow away an opponent's vehicle, disembark your stuff, and you're an instant presence on the battlefield, and uh, creating havoc in the enemy's deployment zone. So they're in with the uh, wave serpent there, and I've uh, been very happy with how they've performed in games. And then the next elite choice is a unit of five fire dragons and these are a must to have in my course love the fire dragon models and they do perform well in games 110 points for five and they have been very effective free up save for all of them now and so i take the exarch at 10 points given the fire pike just adds a little bit of extra distance for that multi melter and then give him another upgrade, which I think is important, and that's fast shot. He gets that extra shot um, because you're taking advantage of that weapon and the fact that he has ballistic skill 5. So two shots of ballistic skill 5, twos to hit, uh, is something that's worth taking advantage of. So uh, he's in. The, the other point about it is you could take an extra one of these, 22 points, firing at ballistic skill 4, where you could pay 10 points and get an extra shot from him at Ballistic Skill 5. So it's better value for money to give him the extra shot. It's not an extra figure, but it almost counts as an extra figure uh, with the shooting. So you're going to let it out four, five, six shots at a good Ballistic Skill and deadly uh, melter weapons there. But to get them into a position where they can take on the heaviest of enemy vehicles or even monstrous creatures, then I put these inside a Wave Serpent as well. Uh, again, I pay the five points for the twin link scatter laser, uh, and uh, that's about it. So that's that elite choice. This is uh, again another anti-vehicle option. Uh, zoom this up the table, disembark these near the enemy vi uh, vehicle, um, and destroy it, and then take on other targets. And then when the wave serpent becomes freed up, it's no longer transporting. Then the, it just goes on the hunt looking for enemy uh, medium vehicles or attacking side and rear armour uh, with its weaponry. So the good thing about the Wave Serpent, it's not just a transport, it's actually a very effective unit in the game as well, which makes it very unique. That's two slots used up. I used to take Harlequins, um, but have recently 
uh, dropped those and changed them for something else. Harlequin's all right, but they didn't have, I didn't have the points to give them a wave serpent as well. I used to run them around the table and they did okay, but I knew they weren't quite what I was looking for. So I changed them around uh, and you'll see the new unit I've got instead. And so far it's done very well. So moving on to fast attack now. Again, a unit that I really wanted in the force just for the harassment value. And that is uh, unit five, warp spiders. Now some people take 10, which is fine, uh, but this is just a harassment unit. So if it dies in the game, then it's it's not a critical unit. It's just there for opportunistic stuff. Uh, so again, a free up save here, um, and then good weaponry. So de uh, Death Spinner, it's monofilament. Remember that rule. Um, it, you're going to get plus one strength against vehicles or units of a low initiative. Um, it's range 12, strength 6 or strength 7 against vehicles, and then assault 2. So it's two shots each, it's eight shots, and then and two from him have a very good ballistic skill. Uh, so you've got ten shots there at strength 7. Brilliant against the side of rear armor of vehicles again. So it's kind of an ambush element to the force we're looking at at the moment. So uh, Warp Spiders, 95 points for all five. And then I take the Exarch at 10 points. So, upgrades for him. You can give him Twin Link Death Spinner. I haven't quite got the points for it. Um, so, But he's Ballistic Skill 5 anyways at 2's to hit. But what I do give him instead is Fast Shot for 10 points. So he's going to fire 3 shots anyway. Um, and then any rolls are 1. It's a shame, but uh, didn't quite have the points for it. Um, but that just makes uh, that unit 135 points. Uh, their ability to deep strike is brilliant and the speed that they have with these uh, warp jump generators as well makes them a very versatile unit indeed. And the amount of times they have annoyed opponents by turning up right behind one of their favorite vehicles and then blowing it away with ease with that sheer weight of shots. So warp spiders are in. Um, didn't used to take them, but I added them to the force and they performed well on pretty much every game. So they've earned the right to be in the force. Now next fast attack is a flyer, because I knew this force struggled against flyers. And then the new codex came out, um, they released the Eldar flyers. And so I have got a Crimson Hunter. And it's primarily uh, anti-flyer, so it's there to deal with the opponent's flyers. Um, so for that reason it's the Crimson Hunter that I went for and then I wanted to do a good job so I pay the points uh, for the Exarch. So he's Ballistic Skill 5. So you're at twos to hit and uh, it's armed with two Bright Lancers and then a Pulse Laser as well. So it's four shots at Strength 8 at twos to hit uh, at AP2 then you've got a good chance of taking out uh, the opponent's vehicles, uh, the opponent's flyers, and indeed vehicles as well. So uh, air cover, and that slot is covered very well um, with this flyer. There's something else to add about the uh, the Exarch there. Uh, he's got Sky Hunter. So when he shoots at a vehicle of the flyer type, then you get three roll armor penetration rolls that don't cause glancing or penetrating it. So he's definitely geared towards taking on enemy flyers. You're going to almost guaranteed hit with all four shots, and then. Uh, you're going to get to re-roll your arm penetration as well. So enemy flyers are in trouble now with this addition to the force. Now he's worked out cheaper. He was 180 points. Uh, the Harlequin unit that I had, this is what replaced the Harlequins. Um, the Harlequins are about 230, 240 points. So that freed up some points in the force, um, which I've then used. I'll explain a bit, a little bit later how I've added some enhancements um, to the rest of the army. So the Crimson Hunter's in. He's uh, performed very well in the game. Very happy to have him in, and it covers that air, that weakness that we had, and that was um, the lack of air cover. So then, uh, moving along, we've got the Crimson Hunter. So we're on to heavy support now, and I have used up all three slots. Um, again, because of that philosophy, we wanted toughness in the Eldar Force. Um, so I've gone for units that are tough uh, to add support to this Eldar army. So first of all, Wraith Lords. Love the figures. Um, so they were a, a compuls almost compulsory choice in this force. Um, love the, the miniature and the sculpting of it and I've uh, been able to paint it up 
in that uh, eerie turquoise kind of colour. So Ray Floored, 120 points, uh, free attacks, free up save, uh, fearless, uh, free wounds, strength and toughness 8, which is brilliant. Uh, so what I've done is 120 points, I've just simply given him the Ghost Glaive, um, so he gets those re-rolls, very very handy indeed, makes him more reliable in combat, and then uh, Bright Lance at 20 points, so it's giving him some anti-tank option, which use these mostly defensively in a game, uh, you stick him behind cover, and then you fire at your target with a decent tank busting weapon there, and then uh, they just go on patrol near your objectives, if the opponent comes too close then you've got good uh, close combat capabilities as well. It's like a vehicle with wounds that can fight back in close combat, so Wraith Lord is a brilliant choice and for that reason uh, I take two Wraith Lords in the force and when your opponent's trying to move in towards uh, your objectives that you're holding and then he sees two Wraith Lords on patrol it is a nightmare, a headache for them to deal with. I also found that wherever these go uh, they tend to clear a path. The opponent backs off and stays away from them. So they're good for area denial as well. Sometimes uh, you'll see them, depends what kind of army I'm facing, but they can also be effective as a steady advance. Just moving up six inches of time up the table, laying down, firing uh, cover with their 36 inch range uh, weapons there, and then uh, towards the last turns of the game, turns five, six, and seven, uh, they reach the enemy position and then uh, break in and uh, use their close combat strengths. We're also giving them the two flamers. So they're excellent at uh, taking on hordes as well, but burning out Imperial Guard and Tyranids um, and Light Infantry. So versatility with that unit, toughness, and uh, they perform very well. Not too bad for points, and after those upgrades I give them, uh, you're looking at 145 points each. So those are the two, HQ, uh, those are the two heavy support slots used up there. And then one left, and it had to be the new uh, Eldar Wraith Knight. So that's the new Wraith Knight model, absolutely superb. I magnetised the torso so that it can spin around, um, the arms move as well, and I've got that option to replace the weapon options, the head spins around, so I can do different poses with it. So for this one, uh, this is an aggressive unit, one that's going to move fast, it's a jump monstrous creature, so you've got a 12 inch move and I tend to go for an aggressive stance of this one so for that reason uh, covering fire will come from the Sun Cannon uh, brilliant weapon at taking out um, tough opponents, that, that triple blast template with the low AP value good range, it's really good and then I pay the points to give them the scatter laser just to make it twin linked and some extra shots coming in and then uh, the uh, shield there as well just to make him a little bit tougher uh, but Wraith Knight strength 10 this time toughness 8 6 wounds 3 up save 4 attacks so brilliant unit 300 points the total value I've paid for it um, but he has dominated in games um, and has performed very well indeed and again another intimidating unit another nightmare for the opponent to deal with so that's the force uh, nice variety of units nice size to them, you've got small infantry units, you've got larger units and then this huge one here and you've got the flyer as well. Uh, hopefully you can see the potential that each of these units has. Um, now we're going to have a look at the whole force together and you'll hopefully see the overall kind of philosophy and mindset of this army. So just before we do that, um, when I calculate this all together, uh, with those spare points from the Harlequins being dropped, uh, I've managed to uh, it's about 35 or so spare points. Now I can play with that differently, um, but what I've decided to do for this force here is to give hollow fields to the two wave serpents. So wave serpents are a nightmare to try and kill, but now with their plus one to their cover save, uh, they are even harder to take out. You've got this cover save, you've got serpent shields, you've got one of the best protected transports available. Um, in Warhammer 40,000, so I think that's points well spent, and uh, that rounds it up. After totaling the whole lot together, uh, that gives me a force of 1,849 points. I actually had 10 spare points as well, 
and decided to give fast shot to the avatar, just taking advantage of that excellent ballistic skill and the fact that he's armed with a melter weapon can now fire it twice, uh, which is handy if he's up against a vehicle, a uh, chimera or something, uh, you can fire it twice, blow it up and then charge the contents of it as well. So just a little extra upgrades, uh, some good ones actually, from points that have been saved from the Harlequin. So 1849 points, and then uh, let's just have a look at the Force now, uh, in its full strength. Right, so that's the Eldar Force, uh, the whole thing together. It's not the biggest of armies, um, but not too tiny. Uh, it's pretty good, a lot of diversity there. Uh, so there's the minimal uh, points cost on the troops. They're designed to stay out of trouble and then zoom in later on, and that allows the rest of the force um, to do the fighting and uh, take the uh, the brunt of the opponent's force as well. So, heavy supports here, Wraith Knight and Wraith Lords, they work well together. Uh, this one advancing and the others can advance or hold back. Uh, good, monstrous creature, toughness, good armour, extremely tough, good strength, anti-vehicle, anti-infantry. Um, anti-heavy infantry, so good heavy stuff there, fast moving for him and then flanking wave serpent, excellent firepower and good protection from the wave serpent and then the striking scorpions in support as well, so that zooms in on the flank and then flying up the table uh, is the other wave serpent with the fire dragons, again tank busting capability there, they'll take on any tank uh, that there is on the table and then again an ambush unit here with the warp spiders able to appear at any corner of the table and uh, often they've appeared rear armour uh, destroying targets and then if they survive they'll leap around and keep doing that as well. Also took the power blades upgrade um, for the uh, exile up there so a bit of close combat capability as well. Good for taking on isolated units tucked away. Uh, and then finally uh, some air support. Crimson Hunter um, adds that dimension to the force as well and a very effective anti-aircraft um, unit it is. So that's the Eldar Force. Um, so some defensive units but really it's going to be a mobile army, one that gets into the opponent's position and attacks from all angles um, and that makes them very hard to deal with. You don't know where the attack's going to come from, there's nowhere to hide on the table and uh, coming on from reserve these units are protected until they're actually in play. Um, and those softer units are covered by those transport vehicles. So the, the force works really well. It's performed well in games. Um, units complement each other. And when the attack's coordinated, um, then it can be very destructive indeed. So that's the Eldar Force. If you like the colour scheme, then check out the painting tutorial on the channel. Um, a lot of battle reports with the Eldar. Different lists, um, but the later games, will you'll see this list here has performed very well and um, it's gained itself a reputation on the channel as uh, the best force that we have. So thanks for watching this Tactica video. Uh, there's the army, hope it's an inspiration for you uh, with your own Eldar that you have or if you're thinking of collecting them. And keep a look out for other battle reports, new ones coming along for the Eldar. And thanks for watching and tune in next time.